be one of the people he thanks uh, immensely, as will Jeff Stoutland, um, who has done, you know, as we all know, a tremendous job with this offensive line. And Jason Kelsey became a consistent all-pro player later in his career. Nobody knows that better than Rob, who handles the all-pro voting. So um, it looks like it's the end for Jason Kelsey. What more can you say about him? I don't think there's ever been an athlete, Rob, and you know this better because you covered every sports in Philadelphia. Um, I don't think there's ever been an athlete that got Philadelphia better than Jason Kelsey. Yeah, he's up there. Bryce Harper is certainly up there too as well, I think. But but Jason more so because he kind of fits right into, lives there, is always involved in the, in the community is going to the different sporting events around town, whether it's Sixers, Flyers, Phillies. And he really is that one athlete that is more Philly probably first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, I would anticipate that he would be a first, but he doesn't have to wait to get into camp, and it'll be five years from now that he'll be uh, in, in Canton and we can all look forward to what's going to be an epic, epic speech uh, up there in the gold jacket. But this is a guy who's going to be very difficult for the Eagles to replace on the football field for sure, too, as well. So you, you think about everything that Jason has brought to this team since he came to Philly, what he means from a leadership standpoint, what he means to the organization from uh, what he's been able to do on and off the field, I think it's going to be a tremendous, tremendous loss for the Philadelphia Eagles. But he'll be around. He'll certainly be around, and he'll be uh, – I'm sure he's going to dive right into some media opportunities. Yeah, uh, has already met with most of the broadcast outlets before <laughs> he ever officially got around to announcing a retirement. So I think Jason will be just fine if we're worried about Jason. I'm not. I'm not worried at all about Jason. I'm worried about the Eagles going forward. Um, and why don't we just go ahead and annoy every single Leo fan who streamed into us right now? Is there any chance that this is a domino effect that Kelsey walks away? So Fletcher goes, yeah, I don't need this stuff anymore. I, I think I'll call it a career too. And maybe even Brandon Graham going, you know, I talked to Kelsey and he talked about how his body is just beaten to hell and truth be told, my body is beaten to hell. And could we see a mass defection of the Eagle Championship veterans from that Super Bowl from 2017? Yeah, I, I think so. When I spoke to Fletcher uh, a little bit less than a month ago at the Super Bowl, he said that he hadn't come to a decision. He didn't want to make an impulsive decision on coming back. And what I, I thought was interesting, guys, is he cited that the health um, injuries, physical injuries, and some of the things that we didn't know about that he was going through. But he also talked about, Fletcher talked about the importance of his mental health. And he said, whether it's year one or year 12 or year 13, his mental health is really something that he needs to take inventory of and make sure it's where he needs it to be. So uh, I'm not sure if there were some things that Fletch may have been going through off the field or just from a, a mental health. I, I think it would wear on you the way that season played out for the Eagles being 10 and one losing six of seven. It's a difficult, difficult place to play when you're losing. It's a great place to play when you're winning, but it's a difficult place to be when you're losing. And there's the constant scrutiny and there's the constant questions and, and there's everyone trying to understand why, why did this team fall apart? And I think some of that may also uh, be wearing on some of these guys too as well and, and when Fletch talked about that and uh, told me a little bit uh, of what he's thinking I, I thought that it's it's probably going to be uh, as you called it Jody a domino effect let Jason have his moment first maybe these other guys whether and I know BG already said he wants to play I, I don't yeah. anticipate that he changed his mind but I, I think Fletch would be next and, and and truth be told, I don't know that he's going to be able to find much in the way of free agency. He's still he's still certainly a a capable player and a veteran presence and a leader. And and I, I'm sure at some point, depending on what the salary 
what he looks like. Uh, but he talked about also whether or not he can dominate on the field. And some guys don't feel like if I can't be that dominant player, I don't want to go out there and, and be a, a role-playing type guy. So I, I do think that the end is, is going to be here and close for Fletcher Cox too as well. I think I'd be a little bit surprised if he does come back. Yeah, that's an interesting point, Rob, you make there about dominant players. Sometimes they don't want to be uh, still playing just to hang on, to not play, to be the role player, to take the step down. And Fletcher sort of did it opposite of Jason Kelsey. Think about it. Jason was a very good player early in his career, but really kicked in late in his career, all pro, uh, yeah. whatever, the last six years. He wasn't always that dominant player as a younger player. When Chip Kelly was here, people were talking about him getting cut. That's that's how it was, whereas Fletcher was dominant, dominant, dominant early in his career. And maybe he doesn't want to be that role player. Maybe it just comes down uh, as simple as that. I'm with you with BG, though. BG's playing year 15, and he's coming back. Um, he wants to finish 15 years with one team, and I think the Eagles – will allow him to do it because I think the contract is easy. Uh, he's still uh, um, a worthy role player. He's still uh, successful in that role. So I, I do think it's not going to reach the domino effect of Brandon Graham. But getting back to Jason Kelsey for a minute, because you were here. I was not here yet in 20, what, 2011, I think, would have been Jason's first year. Yeah. And Howie loves telling that story, Rob. I'm sure you heard it. Uh, Howard Mudd came up to him and said, "Hey, we got a starting player here. We got we're, this guy's going to be a leader of your team." And Howie's like, "Oh, great, great. We're going to, you know, what? A couple years, we'll have a, a starting level player." And he's like, "No, right now, right now, rookie season as a six round pick." And sure enough, started every game as a rookie. Um, he got hurt, I think, the next year, but then it was off and running. Um, pretty amazing story as a six round pick. Yeah, it, it really is J to, to be a six round pick and, and to go, uh, into a perennial pro bowl, all pro guy and, and a future hall of famer. That's just, that's just a tremendous find for the Eagles. One of the, all, one of their all time greatest draft picks. And I have to take a look and think back again to, you know, you put Jordan Melata in there. I think you put Jalen Hurts in there too, as a second round pick who, depending on, on how the future pans out. But Jason Kelsey, sixth-round pick, Hall of Famer, that's got to be right there in the top one, two, or three. Agreed. For sure. Uh, so how did the Eagles advance here? We got a chance to lose Jason Kelsey later today. Uh, got a chance to lose Fletcher Cox later in the week. And they've already lost Kevin Byard. I just don't know how you're going to keep the Eagles Poor together. Kevin Byard taking, taking oh. shrapnel here in Philadelphia, Rob. Yeah, he's take, taking some of it for me. Sorry about that, Kevin. Um, yeah, talk about the greatest draft picks that the Eagles have ever made. Uh, Kelsey, one of them. The deal that Howie made for Kevin Bayard, two draft picks and a player. Not really one of Howie's winners. Who's going to be playing safety for the Eagles this upcoming year, Rob Marty? They got two guys on the contract right now, one of which we know is not probably not going to be able to start the season in Sidney Brown because his injury is going to have him rehabbing until after the season starts. Who the hell is going to be playing safety for the Birds? No, man. Uh, you're going to have to dive into free agency for some stop gaps and, and look, look at the draft and see what they can – come up with there and and they're going to have, they got some holes. They're going to have some holes. I think they're going to have to fill in a cornerback. They got safety. They're going to have to bring in a linebacker. This is a team that um, is going to be a little bit in transition, but I, I also don't think they're going to take a step enough of a step back to be rebuilding, but certainly you got to look at the safety position. You got to look at some of those, some of those holes that are going to be created. How are you going to replace Jason Kelsey on the offensive line? I, I know Jurgen's supposed to slide in there. Now you got a whole, at the guard position too, as well. So uh, yeah, Kevin Byard's uh, short little non-memorable stay in Philadelphia ends up being costly in, in terms of draft picks and what you have to. Yeah. His hometown too, didn't work out. Uh, mm -hmm. Didn't work out coming back. I, I think Howie will get some picks back some way, somehow. Uh, Howie's, a, Howie's a mover and a shaker and you can always trade down and accumulate some more picks. You'll find some ways to make up for those draft picks. 
Out in Indy, Rob, there were a couple guys who mentioned the Eagles might be interested in bringing C.J. G.J. back, C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Now, a couple things there. One, I think they realized, hey, we really need a playmaker on the back end, and C.J. was certainly that when he was here. But he didn't leave here under the best of circumstances. Now, you know, maybe he found out, guess what, how he wasn't disrespecting him with the contract offer because he got what he got from Detroit. Uh, one year prove it deal, he got injured. Um, is that enough to for CJ's uh, sort of camp to say, you know what, I was great there. Let's revisit this. Let's try to make magic again. He got his car stolen here. A lot of fans <laughs> um, uh, weren't uh, uh, the best when he left. Does that impact it? What do, what do you think of those rumors of a potential reunion with C.J. Gardner-Johnson? I think those are rumors that make sense because you look at the need, you look at the familiarity with the player, and you just do the simple math, two and two equals four there. But I think there's a lot that goes into that. What is he going to want on the open market? We saw what his value was last year and and certainly it was a contract it was a money issue with him not coming back to the eagles and i i don't know that the eagles are going to be wanting to spend and, and there's a increase certainly in the salary cap and you, you you got extra money to allocate if you want to but i, I don't anticipate the eagles wanting to give a multi-year deal to CJ GJ. They didn't last year and he's coming off an injury plate season. Why would you want to do that this year? So if he's willing to take another one year prove it type deal at decent numbers as a stopgap type guy, I, I think there could be something there. I would anticipate though also for him, he'll get some opportunities with some other teams and and see if, if he Denard can Wilson's in Tennessee now I think that go. makes a lot of sense yeah there you there there you go that that can happen I, I'm not a big CJ Gardner Johnson fan just from the standpoint of of his back and forth with everybody and and who who was it um at Baker Mayfield in Tampa Bay and he's talking about the Buccaneers weapons and he mentions a guy who's who's injured who uh hasn't been there all season and and Baker comes back with well he's certainly not watching the film uh so russell gage it was russell gage talking about russell. what a weapon russell gage has been <laughs> hasn't played it down all year man so uh and those kind of guys sometimes uh will, will irk me a little bit so I, I think the eagles might be going in a different direction it's a name that makes sense and at this point guys we're going to hear as free agency everybody's interested in everybody Nobody's yeah. gonna rule out and nobody's gonna rule out any team. You're gonna hear a million theories, you're gonna hear a million players who are this team's considering and wanting to look at and all that stuff. And it's a matter of how you dissect what those agents are giving you. All right. I got a willing to spend question. Um, mm -hmm. because you just said the Eagles have shown a propensity to be not to be willing to spend top of the market, uh, above and beyond what seems to be fair market value for a player. They're not necessarily willing to spend at safety. They're not necessarily willing to spend at linebacker. They're not necessarily willing to spend interior offensive line. I asked John earlier, uh, could they draft the center if Jason Kelsey's going to walk away? And he said, no, they're going to move Jurgens into center. Well, will, will they draft the guard? Well, they don't necessarily put as much of a value on the guard position. We know damn well they're not going to pay a running back. That's a foregone conclusion. So safety linebacker, running back, interior lineman, who the hell are they going to spend money on? They're, they're in good cap shape now. Not great. Middle of the pack in the NFL. They got some flexibility. Where are they going to spend it? If they're not going to buy a linebacker or a safety, a cornerback, are they going to go overpay for a cornerback again? How'd that work with Bradbury this year? Not great. Um where are they going to spend? They do have the cap one up. They're in decent shape. Where are they going to take their big plunge, Rob Motti? They've done that with corner, and it's worked way back. If you go back to Troy Vincent, it didn't, and, and Asante Samuel didn't work with Namdi Asenwa, and Bradbury worked for a year. So the, the corner position is one where I think this regime will spend some money um, for sure. But I think, Jody, some of that money may go into re-upping some guys, too. You look at Devontae Smith's contract. You look at extending some potential guys. 
Uh, Landon Dickerson. They got to get Landon yeah, done Dickerson before Devonte because he's the second round pick instead of the first. So they don't yeah. have that extra year, the extra cushion. Um, and Landon's been tremendous. So they got to get him done. Uh, yeah, you're right, Rob. There's, you know, and there, then you got to sign special. your draft picks. You know, over yeah. the cap does a tremendous job of exp whatever they call it, uh, real cap value, whatever, because people never focus it. Oh, the Eagles have whatever they have now. It's about 40 million. Mm -hmm. But then you got to sign your draft picks. So the effective cap space is whatever, 35, 36 mm -hmm. million. Which um, probably puts them in the middle of the league, right? A little bit. I think I'll double check. They're probably a little bit under middle, probably 18th, 19th, but I'll double check as you guys talk. Um, uh, they don't have, there's a lot of teams with a ton of money. Um, and you never really want to be in that position because generally when you're in that position, Rob, you're usually a bad football team. You got team. a bad football team. You yeah. Need to keep yeah. And, and you, you yeah. look at some of the positions and the guys have got like it's in free agency, for example, there's wide receivers. The Eagles don't need to go out there. They don't have to bring in a Mike Evans. You're looking at bringing in a guy who's, who's a number three. You By can the way, the box re-signed Mike Evans. They're uh, so that just happened? Yeah, that just happened this morning. Uh, so he'll be back with your now your box as you're yeah. in the Tampa area. Hall of, uh, Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame wide receiver, first ballot right there. A, a guy that we saw that trend and he didn't want to leave. I don't know yeah. why you, you I, I don't know why you would want to leave Tampa. I can attest to that. Uh, so it, it makes sense, but they're not going to be in the market for for guys who are uh, at that position who are going to be superstars. So I think they do have to bring in a, a viable third wide receiver option for sure but you you can find that at lesser dollar value uh, I, I do think that this is a team that is going to be in that hey can can we can we win it all this year and i don't know that they've come to that determination yet yeah the way Gwen, things ended i don't know that they're two players three players away from being a super bowl champion in 2024 third wide receiver quez we hardly knew ye no, we knew Quez way too well. That's why Rob Marty is exactly right, and they need to be moving on. And that Evan signing, I know it's a long was a long shot. Uh, that it's bad news for the Eagles because if they had to keep Evan, they want to keep Baker, and they get a franchise tag, and they only got one to use. I thought maybe, just maybe, longest of shots. Antoine Winfield could become available, and there's a guy. I, I don't get what freaking position he plays. You pay him. He's top of the market. He's as good as it gets in the National Football League. But getting Evans resigned makes it much more likely that Winfield's getting the franchise tag than they're in Tampa, doesn't it, Rob? Uh, I, I think they're going to do everything they can to, to keep him. I, I'm not sure, Jody, about the franchise tag. It's certainly an option, and, and it's it's one way to make sure you're going to keep The him. safety net is what it is. You try and get a deal yeah. done. You negotiate as best you can. Yeah. You get pushed up against the wall eh, with what a franchise tag. And, and he's such an all-around versatile player. They, they, this is a guy that had one of the all-time best seasons from safety uh, in, in league history from what he was from the number of sacks and everything else, fumbles and forced fumbles and, and what he can do playing in the slot and everything else. He's that valuable of a player. If there's a guy on that team you're going to want to franchise, you should want to franchise him, as you said as a safety net. I think they'll get something done with him long-term, but that that's a guy who is going to get a lot of interest. And for the Bucks, Baker's at the top of their list. Antoine, you got to come, you got to bring him back, but bringing Mike Evans back means you're going all in. You're not, you're not going to sit there and bring back a, a player like that and pay him the money after a decade of success. He's going to be at some point, he's not going to play up to that contract. I would, I would certainly not anticipate that happening. So they're go they're going for it, and I don't I don't know that they're going to be. In yeah, I think it was. Uh, it went, by the way, Rob, it was two years, fifty two million for Mike Evans, thirty five million guaranteed. So I think it was sensible, short Makes two sense. years at at his age. So I think the Bucks did a good job there. Obviously, representative uh, of of the type of player he is as well. Uh, you mentioned Baker Mayfield. Uh, Quarterback musical chairs. Um, other than Justin Beals, is this all to do about nothing? The Bucks want Baker Mayfield back. The Vikings want Kirk Cousins back. The Falcons could get involved, I guess, when it comes to Cousins. Um, 
or is it just going to be everybody stays put except Justin Fields and Justin goes, whether it's Atlanta or Pittsburgh, uh, somewhere of that nature? A lot of good quarterbacks in the draft. Uh, of those three, I think Justin's going to be the only one moving. Don't forget Russell Wilson, too, is going to be. Yeah, got Russell. To, yeah. Russell's got to be on the move. But just sitting down and speaking with Baker, speaking with Kirk over the past month or so, both guys want to be where they already are. And, and I don't think that another team is going to swoop in. Now, you're going to hear until those deals get done, until Baker's deal gets done with Tampa, and until Kirk's deal gets done with Minnesota, the agents are going to want to – make sure that there's some some pressure put on. So you're going to hear, oh, this team's going to be interested. Atlanta's going to be interested in Kirk or so-and-so is going to make that, – that's going to happen. We're going to hear that. But I, I think both of those guys, and, and especially in, in Baker's case with Liam Cohn coming in as the offensive coordinator, someone he's familiar with, with them keeping Mike – like it's a, it's a home run. Uh, it's a slam dunk. He wants to be there. Uh, he wants to stay in in the city, loves it here, and uh, I think that's going to happen. And the same with Kirk, and 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 I, I think there's enough pressure on the Vikings internally from players like Justin. They got to get Justin Jefferson figured out too, as well, and he's going to get it an astronomical uh, dollar amount. So uh, Mike Evans gets his average annual of twenty six. I, I think JJ is going to be in the thirty to thirty five. Yeah range so that's that's going to take up a lot but but I, I i think that kirk cousins is going to end up going back there so you're going to look at justin fields he's going to have to be on the move the bears last year had their shot at bryce young they had their shot at cj stroud they said no thank you we're going to trade out and still ended up with the number one pick in justin fields i, I don't think their logic was flawed last year they had justin fields they had an opportunity to uh, accumulate some assets in the draft they did it they bring in dj moore and they end up with the number one pick again and a shot at caleb williams and i don't think they're going to pass that up this year so justin fields is going to be that guy that gets and that ends up on the move whether it's pittsburgh whether it's atlanta wherever it may be and, and then the russell wilson situation still got to be figured out and I don't think Russell Wilson's done being a good football player. I, I thought he put up some pretty good numbers last year, and it, it, he didn't win enough to stay in Denver. But I, I think wherever he goes, if it's the right situation, he can impact that team and still play at a star quality caliber uh, quarterback level. And, and I think that's going to be the big addition for one of these teams is bringing in Russ. Who, uh, what are you hearing? I know you got your friend going to post and stuff like this. What's Chicago going to get back for Fields? If that's the way they're leaning and they're going to use a pick out of first round and a quarterback, Caleb Williams or any of the other two that are thought to be up there, um, what are they going to get for Fields in return? I know it's kind of fluctuated during the season. Yeah. I remember one time I saw they could get a one, and I'm going, really? I I'm as big a Justin Fields fan as there is, and I never thought they were going to be able to get a one back for him, but I thought a two was doable. Now I'm hearing three or four. What if the value just isn't there? Bears got to do it, got to pull the plug, uh, got to uh, move on. If they're getting lousy return on them, could they even keep fields and have a competition at quarterback? Joe, this is a question I've heard being asked a lot, uh, a lot lately, is what is the value of Justin Fields and what's going to be enough for them to make the, pull the trigger on that? It, it's nobody, nobody I spoke to thinks it's going to be a one. That right. they can get a, that they, they can get a one for Justin Fields, and, and that makes sense. And uh, the ability to get a two is is not definite either. That could be one of those deals where you always have the conditional: if he starts X amount of games, or if he takes certain number of snaps, the three becomes a two, the four becomes a three. But I think it's going to be a combination uh, somewhere along there. A two, uh, the best being a two, and then maybe a three and a four, something along those lines. But just a, a couple picks and, and, and maybe some a swap of late round, a swap of a five and a swap of a four, a swap of whatever it may be. But that's about it. And, and, and that's that's the big question. We'll see how it plays out. And it's going to have to play out fairly soon. Teams are whoever's going into the draft is going to acquire Justin Fields needs to know uh, at that point that they have him and that the draft picks have been traded. And, and they're certainly the Bears are going to have to make that decision quickly. Mighty man, at nope. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say at Rob Motti, make sure you, you follow Rob on X Twitter uh, does a tremendous job with the AP pro football podcast. I haven't talked to you since the Super Bowl, Rob. So I know you were out in Vegas. We started with Jason Kelsey. We'll end with Jason Kelsey. He was omnipresent. You got any stories of shirtless Jason Kelsey at the poker tables or 
Lady Gaga <laughs> concerts or whatever the heck he was doing out there. But he certainly looked like he was about to retire when he was out in Vegas. The, yeah, uh, he, he did. I, I, I didn't run into Jay. I didn't even run into him on a red carpet this year at NFL Honors. or I, I, We weren't in the same circle this this past unfortunately you know i didn't get a chance to to run into to jason and 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 his future sister-in-law or anything along, <laughs> along those lines but I, i'm looking forward to seeing what he's going to do next but if he's going to be in the booth or he's going to do some analyzing work or anything else we may not see him shirtless rooting on travis yeah gotta put the tie on suit and yeah. tie got a justin timberlake it uh right. gotta put that on I, I just got a uh, text from a source that said, you know, Taylor Swift might be in Xfinity Live today, that there could be a party. Oh, don't set that off. There'll be traffic down there. Like, you don't <laughs> say that, Jerry. God, you kill us. I, We're trying to get down just there. Just saying the Swifties could yeah. be in the house. They could be in South Philly. No, over by Rob Mowdy's old stomping grounds. Uh, that could know. happen today. I am glad to be however many thousands of miles away I am right now from that Swifty collaboration. Uh, try, uh, by the way, for those who think Jody is serious, Taylor is in Singapore. Oh, so Travis quick is, plane. Can she get a fan? She got yeah. back to the Super Bowl pretty fast from Japan. So uh, maybe she no. did. Out the, no, probably not. Oh, well. She did, I, but she is in Singapore. So no. How the hell do you know reason. where Taylor Swift is? Because how crazy. did you look that up that fast? Because you got a Taylor Swift website where you go Taylor. You got the, on the phone where it tells my. No, as I said, Travis. Where all Travis is in Philadelphia um, mm. to do a fundraiser, and you know, obviously, people putting it together with Jason's potential retirement. So Travis is in Philadelphia probably for both of those reasons. And there's a bunch, bunch of stories already out there from TMZ, blah, blah, blah. Travis Kelsey visits Philadelphia while Taylor Swift performs in Singapore. So, um, oh, so TMZ. thankfully, I'm, thankfully. I'm, I'm outed as a bad source by TMZ. Damn, that's not yeah. good when you're topped by TMZ. Uh, Marty, man, always a pleasure. You have a good time at Disney last week with the girls? Uh, it, 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 it worked out a whole lot better than the, the combine where I thought I was going to be, but that didn't plan, pan out. So why not? Yeah, it was great. It was Glad awesome. you had a great time with the girls. Thank you very much for jumping on with us tonight. We'll you get you back in a couple weeks. Thanks, bro. Rob. Take care. Rob Marty here with us on Birds 365. Yeah, no you're scared. Stuff. Yeah, don't do that to me, Jody. Because they will show up if they think Taylor's. But I just throw some stuff at the wall and see if any of it's stuck. Uh, we, I, we didn't even get into the whole... Uh, Marty running the awards dinner and the guys who won awards and whatever. We haven't had him on since any of that stuff happened. And there's a whole bunch of stuff I wanted to ask him about that we couldn't. Well, because... we didn't know this was happening, uh, you know, during the show. For once, the news breaks during the show, not immediately after the show. So. Exactly. Well, we were we going to gotta... talk about a bunch of combine stuff. We didn't even get to talk about the combine. because No so much combine happened. stuff. Uh, yes. Jason Kelsey press conference, one o'clock. This afternoon, we'll come back and uh, I, I'm going to hold Johnny Mac's feet to the fire. He's going to have to make a call, yay or nay, is Jason Kelsey retired. <laughs> this is about a 98% shot that he gets this one right. I give you my thoughts. Come back and put a bow on the show here on Birds 365.